Hello students, today we are going to talk about changes within the nucleus due to emission of alpha, beta and gamma particles and we will also discuss about the uses of radioactivity. Now before going ahead with the topic, if you want to improve and excel in Max and Science then do check out the micro courses offered by Infinity Lend and don't forget to use the coupon code HQ10 to get additional 10% discount. For more details, do check out the description. Coming back to the topic, let us discuss the changes within the nucleus. Now the nucleus of radioactive substance, they undergo spontaneous decay by self emission and they do this to form more stable nucleus. So this emission of alpha, beta and gamma radiation is done to form a stable nucleus. As the radioactive substance are unstable, they do these emissions to form a stable nucleus. In the emission of alpha and beta particles, there is this change in the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. Whereas in the emission of gamma radiation, there is only change in the energy of the nucleus as gamma radiation is nothing but a category of electromagnetic wave which does not have any mass. It is just a wave with energy. Now going ahead, let us discuss first of all alpha emissions. If an unstable nucleus contains much more neutrons than the number of protons, then there are chances that it emits something called as alpha particle. Now alpha particle, they contains two protons as well as two neutrons, which is nothing but an helium nucleus. Now when we have this stream of alpha particles coming out, we call them as alpha rays. Now if we consider a nucleus X, which is having atomic number Z and atomic mass number A. Now after emission of alpha particle, we will have some other nucleus from which the number of protons have decreased by 2. So this will be Z minus 2 and the number of neutrons is also decreased by 2. So capital A is atomic mass number which is nothing but number of protons and number of neutrons. So two protons and two neutrons are less now. So this one will have atomic number as A minus 4. X is called as parent nuclei and Y is called as daughter nuclei and we have alpha particle over here which is emitted and this is also denoted as helium nucleus. So if you can see the equation it is balanced now. We have Z over here on the left hand side, right hand side we have Z minus 2 and plus 2 which makes it Z. On the left hand side we have atomic mass number A, on the right hand side we have A minus 4 and plus 4 which is again equal to A. So the equation is balanced. Now let us take some example. So the first example is radioactive uranium. We will take the isotope of uranium which is having atomic mass number as 238. Now after the emission of helium nuclei, we are left with thorium which has 90 atomic number and atomic mass number will decrease by 4. So this is 234. So this is the example of alpha emission. Next, let us talk about beta emission. Once again, if there is an unstable nucleus which contains more number of neutrons than the number of protons, then in this beta emission, a neutron may change into a proton. And while doing so, there is an emission of electron. Mind you, this emission is from the nucleus. This is not the electron which is orbiting the nucleus. Now beta particle is this electron given out from the nucleus at a very high speed. Now let us check out the equation over here. A neutron changes to a proton which has one positive charge plus there is this emission of beta particle which is nothing but high speed electron with a negative charge. And the stream of these beta particles are nothing but beta 
rays. For the equation to be complete, there is this emission of anti-neutrino particles as well during the conversion of neutron into a proton and this anti-neutrino particle is nothing but energy emitted when a neutron is converted into a proton with electron which is nothing but beta particle. Thus over here what we observe is the number of nucleons over here remains the same. Number of nucleons means capital A atomic mass number but atomic number Z it will increase by 1 because the count of proton will increase. So if I have a parent nuclei with atomic number Z and atomic mass number A then after the emission of beta particle it will be having one additional proton means atomic number will increase by 1 but the number of nucleons will remain same because the neutron is converted into proton. So the sum of neutron and proton will be same plus there is this emission of beta particle which is nothing but electron emitted at high speed. Let us take an example on this. So if I take an example of carbon isotopes which is C6, 14. Now if the atomic number increases by 1 over here means it becomes 7 then we know ki nitrogen is the element with atomic number 7 mass number remains the same and there is this emission of electron or beta particle over here. I hope this part is also clear to everyone. Lastly we have gamma emissions now alpha or beta emissions are generally followed by gamma emissions why so because generally the daughter nuclei or parent nuclei after emissions they are in excited state excited state means they are having additional energy and to become stable they have to give out this energy and this excess energy comes out in the form of gamma emission so gamma radiation is nothing but the extra energy released by the excited nucleus in the form of electromagnetic radiation there is no change in the atomic number and atomic mass number as simply there is this emission of energy only. So after studying all three, please note that the electron emitted in the beta decay, it comes from the nucleus as already discussed as it is created in the nucleus after a neutron is converted into proton. Second, in a single radioactive decay, either we will have alpha decay or we will have beta decay, not both simultaneously. But we can see gamma radiations, gamma emissions after alpha or beta emissions. And finally, the daughter product formed after emission of alpha and beta may again be radioactive and they may again undergo radioactive decay till they become a stable nucleus. Now going ahead, let us talk about the uses of radioactivity from radioisotopes. So let us first understand what are radioisotopes. So isotopes we already know these are elements with same atomic number and different atomic mass number means they have different number of neutrons. Now we find that radioactive isotopes are nothing but isotopes of some element which are having atomic number less than 82 and they are radioactive. The nucleus of atoms they become radioactive when the number of neutrons in the nucleus exceeds the number of protons inside it. Now they can be prepared artificially by nuclear transmutation as well as it is vital in various fields of medical, industrial and scientific use. So let us check out the applications of radioactivity in the medical use. The first medical use that we have is to treat diseases like leukemia and cancer by radiotherapy. Gamma radiations from cobalt are used to treat cells in the malignant tumor of the patients. Next is the salt of weak radioisotopes. They are used as tracers and uh, after injecting in the bloodstream, they are used to diagnose the presence of tumors and blood clots well before they become dangerous. 
and we can also use these tracers to study the natural process of human body which is called as radiocardiology in which blood circulation is studied by the help of these tracers. And lastly, we have gamma rays which are used to sterilize the bandages, dressing, syringes and other equipment to make them free of germs. And this method is quicker, reliable, cheaper than the process of sterilization by heat or any other method. Next, scientific uses ka bhi baat kar lete. Let us discuss scientific uses as well. So alpha particles which are emitted, they are used as a projectile for nuclear reactions. We can study the scattering of alpha particles from the nucleus and it helps us estimating the size of the nucleus and understanding the nature of the forces that exist in the nucleus which are called as nuclear forces. Now the radioactive tracers can also be used in agricultural science to study the growth of plants for example to understand how readily a plant takes in the manure chemical manure like phosphate and which part of the plant the phosphate goes. Lastly, the age of excavated material of archaeological importance, rocks and buried plants, they can be estimated by the process which is nowadays very popularly known as carbon dating in which we use C14 isotope carbon. Lastly, we also have industrial uses. So the very first use that we have is fuel for uh, atomic energy reactors, U uranium is used in this case. Secondly, we can avoid the accumulation of charges on the moving parts of machine due to friction by using radioisotopes. As the radioisotopes, they emit radiation. These radiation, they ionize the gases. And these ionized gases, they pick up the charges that get accumulated on the machines due to friction. Next, we can use ionizing effect of radiation to make certain luminescent also. And finally, we know that alpha beta radiations, they have different penetration range and we can use them to control the thickness of paper, plastic and metal sheet during their manufacture. I hope this is clear to everyone. Thank you very much.